song in itself You're looking into my heart I'll bring you more than a song Today, Lord, we just bring you our hearts, Father. We're here to worship you, Lord, and we just thank you for everything that you do in our lives. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to that we can just give God everything. He doesn't ask for anything but our love, our worship. That's all he wants from us. So today and every day, we just give God more than a song. We give him our heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back i'm coming back to the And it's all about you. 
Jesus. Welcome, everybody. Turn around, say hello to someone, and just stay in the heart of worship today as we continue to sing songs honoring our Lord, who He is, and who He says we are. children of God, that you have secured a place for us, that you are for us, not against us, Lord. May we always know that you, Lord, you are for us, God, not against us. And we just bow in your glory and your mercy, knowing, Lord, that you will always be for us. Yes. 
Have your way, God. We may be small, but you are not small. You are mighty. You are mighty to save. Amen. You heal. You redeem. You restore. Amen. Come, have your way. Amen.
Thank you, God. Thank you. Let's give it to God. He raises us. He's with us. And he's always with us. And that is so comforting to know that we don't have to save ourselves. God saves. So we're going to invite Seth up now to give offering. And he's going to say a prayer over the church. So feel free to be seated. I just wanted to say this morning, um, <clears throat> a lot of things in our life require fuel, our bodies, mm -hmm. our vehicles. We have such an awesome worship team here that we could come in, <clears throat> that we could come in and they fuel our souls every morning or every Sunday. They come in here and they fuel our souls. Thank you guys. Thank You're you. so awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Isaiah, Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Let's give praise to him this morning. He, lo he loves us that much. Let's give him praise this morning. We're coming into the holiday. We're coming into the holiday seasons where so many families are going to be together and rejoice, and so many families are going to be down and dismayed somewhat but let's raise them up let's raise god up to raise them up that their holidays will be happy and and just joyful in this community so thank you jesus for our offering this morning give freely this morning jesus will multiply everything that we do exponentially he will do it amen. and let's just give him praise amen thank amen. you jesus thankful for you the good news today a trilogy of parables in Luke chapter 15 Jesus used three parables about three situations that left three objects lost for three different reasons a sheep a coin and a son each were lost and when each was found again thankfulness sprung forth the lost sheep became lost as the result of not paying attention or a lack of understanding or wisdom. Jesus is the good shepherd. Thank God that he is willing and able to search you out, that he might return you to his flock. The lost coin became lost because of circumstances beyond its control. Sometimes through no fault of your own, hardships may visit you. Thank God that he sees injustice and he hears your cry. The lost son became lost as a result of selfish, rebellious attitude. Bad decisions can only lead to bad results. Thank God that he waits for the return of the prodigals. The sheep, the coin, and the son all found themselves needing to be found, and they were. No matter how you may have found yourself needing to be found, Jesus came and died to search you out, and the Father is thankful for you because his Son paid for you to be found. Being thankful is a choice. Be thankful today. Amen. Amen.
Wow, that was some good news. You know, I, I got to say, you know, as the Lord, as I prepare these messages, sometimes it's a struggle and sometimes clarity doesn't quite come, you know, but it's not about, it, it always has to be about what God has to say about a situation. If all we have, all I have and all you have to offer God this morning is your willingness to serve him, to be of service to him and to love him. That's all we can bring to the table. He, he provides everything else. So God, the Bible says, loves taking the person that doesn't know anything. And so watch what I can do with this one. God likes to take the person that society sees as the one that, as, that's incapable. And he loves raising that person up and saying, look what I can do through this person. And for us to be recipients of what God wants to do, requires that we understand that it's God doing it. Amen? Amen? And we do these things to glorify Him. It's not about bringing glory to ourselves. It's about bringing glory to the Father. Can somebody say a big amen to that? Amen. Just like Sylvia. She's going to go over there and she's going to bring glory to the Father by investing in these children. Amen? amen. But thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. Kids, go on over with, with your teacher. How is everybody? Can, ever, can we say God is good? God is good all the time. God is good all the time. You and me, not so much. So we, 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 we have some days are better than others, you know. And some, so the reality is that without God, we fall, fall so far short. But if God is with us, who can be against us? If God is with us. Who can be against us? Hey, I heard some good news this morning. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they lifted the restrictions on churches. They were it. So, so they came to the conclusion that we can. And so somebody told me it was another state. Somebody this morning told me it's California also that they, uh, re they re removed the restrictions. This has been a hard year. Think back, everybody. Think back when, the, when this COVID thing first happened and then all the doors of the churches were locked and we fought our way through this because God says, I will build my church and the gates of Hades and shall not prevail against it. And that virus is straight from Hades. Amen. That's something that's been loosed on our nation and on this world. It's a spiritual component. There's a very strong spiritual component. And if we allow that spiritual component to compress us or oppress us or divide us, Jesus fails. And Jesus says he's not going to fail. Amen? So we have to stand on what Jesus says. Jesus says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. We thank you, Jesus, that we are your church. Congratulations, folks. You are the church of Jesus. Amen. Amen. One more time, God is good. What I was saying earlier, and I was in the prayer room, I was expressing to the prayer team, saying, you guys pray for me because uh, the Lord sometimes he'll give me something and it's not quite there in my mind, in my spirit, and I have to kind of present it in a way. And, and what, what I've learned over the years that is that if I wait for everything to be in perfect alignment, nothing will ever be presented. Because what happens is when we preach or, or we talk or we share the word of God, we share it with our own spirits also. Because none of us understand the fullness of the word. None of us understands the fullness of God. And none of us can comprehend the fullness of the spirit. So if we allow ourselves to release these things that God puts in us, he'll multiply it. He'll multiply and he, he'll uh, uh, bring life to it. So, Father, we pray that this word that we're going to receive from you this morning be full of life and that bring life into our homes, into our spirits, and into our households, Lord. We thank you for lifting this thing. You're lifting this thing, Jesus. You, you said you will not be defeated and you are the victor and we thank you that you're on our side everybody say jesus is on my side jesus is on my side so i've been thinking about this for the last couple of weeks and the title of this message is wrestling with god or wrestling against god you are you a christian this morning if you're a christian you are with god right jesus says i will never leave you nor forsake you when he can when he commissioned his church he says lo i will always be with you and so God is with us, but sometimes we 
being with God can sometimes stand against God. And we start wrestling with our faith. And sometimes we're wrestling with our faith. Sometimes we're wrestling against our faith. Sometimes we're wrestling with understanding God. And sometimes we're wrestling against God. And even though our spiritual position is in Christ, we can get on outside of the will of God. And when that happens, we're wrestling against his will. So we're wrestling against God. So what I wanted to do today is look at, look at this. So... Let's go to here. I just want to mention Romans 8.31 says, how many know there's over 7,000 promises in the Bible? There's over 7,000. Some people say up to 8,000 promises in the Bible. Different people have tried to count them all, and there's different um, variations on that number. So let's just number 7,000 is about medium. So uh, there's 7,000 promises in the Bible, and one of the promises is, I think that one of the chief promises is that God will never leave us. God will never leave us. But we as Christians, I'm trying to lay a little groundwork here. You are in Christ as a believer. And there's two aspects to being in that spiritual position. Being in Christ is a spiritual position. There's only two spiritual positions that really matter. Either you're in Christ or you're not in Christ. And we as Christians are in Christ, that's our spiritual position, and there's two aspects to that spiritual position. There's positional, this is our spiritual position, and there's relational. We have a relationship with him, and sometimes our relationship can be cut off because we are in rebelliousness or we're in a sinful part, a sinful thing that we're doing, and our relationship is cut off even though our position is secure. Does that make sense to you? And so when we're out of relationship because of we're, we're being stubborn or rebellious or we're trying to force God's will, we're wrestling against God, not with God. See, we all wrestle with our faith. Have you noticed that faith is not always easy? It's common for Christians to wrestle with faith. We all wrestle with faith at different times, but to wrestle with our faith is far different from wrestling against our faith. Either we are with faith, as challenging as faith can sometimes be, or we are against faith because for whatever reason, faith never was or faith has ceased to be a way of life for us. Jesus said that he would always be with you. And if he is with you, who can stand against you? You are either with God or against God. Consider these two spiritual positions as you contemplate whether you are wrestling with God or you're wrestling against God this morning. Something we really got to think about. Because if we're real with ourselves, and real with our faith, we can look back, and I know I can, maybe I'm the only one, but I can look back at times where I was wrestling against God because I was going against his will, so I'm wrestling against God. See, when you're wrestling with God, you're fighting for the same cause, right? God says, I, I made a promise to you, and it's going to cause you, you're going to have to wrestle for this, but we're on the same page, so I'm wrestling alongside of God, I'm wrestling with God. But if I'm fighting against God, God's will, I'm fighting against God. And so I want to, as we open this up, hopefully it'll make more sense to you. Let's go, let's begin it in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And so we're focusing on two words, with and against. Ephesians chapter, actually let's go to 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, if anybody needs a pen, please raise your hand. Somebody will bring you a pen or a Bible. It's a good idea to write something down if it touches you or, or something you want to refer or, uh, to at a later date, later time. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, finally, my brother, be strong. Where? In the Lord. See, in the Lord. That means that's, you're in that spiritual position. You're, strong, you're in the Lord. Be strong in that spiritual position, in the Lord, and the power of his might. His might, not my might, I can't fight this thing alone, I need his power. In his might, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand 
against. There's that word against. We're looking at two words. We're start looking at with, and we're looking at against. There's a contrast there, and we're going to see as this unfolds what that means. Stand against the wiles of the devil, for we do not wrestle against. Here's that word again. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness and of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly place in the heavenly place says and because we do therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand now see we all see all those against now we're going to see a whole bunch of widths withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand sometimes we just got to stand as we've battled through this covid see we were taking ground for the kingdom I mean, we still are but as a church not just this church the church at large the, the christians we're moving we're moving we're moving we're marching on moving on and then this thing happened and then sometimes we just got to stand god never says to retreat he says sometimes the strategy is stand when you've done all you can do you can't take any more ground at this point stand and don't give any ground back Amen? And so as this thing passes, we need to prepare ourselves to start marching once again. Amen? We've been standing. Now we need to move out. And I feel that season's right around the corner. Somebody should say amen to that. And so because we're going to um, withstand, we need tools. And here we go again. Back to Genesis, I mean, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Stand, therefore, having girded your faith, your waist, now we have the widths. We had a bunch of against. Now we're widths, right? Now we're in unity. With truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we're, he's talking about a spiritual conflict. How many know that we are in the midst of a spiritual conflict? When Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, he said, oh, the gates of hell, hell is going to push back against my church. And he's going to use all kinds of weapons. You better put on the helmet of salvation. You better have your shield of faith. You better have the, put on the shot of your feet with the gospel because we need to walk in the gospel. If we're going to take this thing out, we need to go within the power of the gospel. And you better have that word in your, implanted in you, and you better live and speak the word of God. That is how we withstand the wiles of the enemy. There is an unseen spiritual reality that is just as real as the physical reality, the seen physical reality. We wrestle against the principalities and the powers of darkness because we are with God. If you're a Christian, you're with God and you're called because you're with God, you need to wrestle against those forces. Earlier in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, he says that we were all at one time walking with the sons and daughters of disobedience who walked the course of the world. And it goes on to say that the course of the world was set by Satan himself. Satan came down. He took dominion of this world. Adam gave it over to him. He came and he set the world, you and I, before we came to the Lord, they set the world on a course. And Jesus says, I took you off that course and I put you on a new course. Now you're walking with me. When you were there, you were walking against me. Now you're walking with me. Does that make sense? Ephesians 2.2, 2, what I just referenced, says that we all were sons and daughters of disobedience before we said yes to Jesus. We walked the course of the world, and that course has been set by Satan. By Satan. There are two kingdoms. Kingdom of light, kingdom of dark, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light. And each kingdom is led by a prince. What's a principality? A principality is an organization led by a leader identified as a prince. There's a prince of darkness, Satan, and there's a prince of light, Jesus, a principality. We live in a municipality. You know, it's an organization led by a certain leadership structure. A principality is led by a prince. So here, when he says we fight against those principalities, they're spiritual principalities led by princes, but Jesus is 
our prince, and because we're with him, those principalities can't stand against us. Does that make sense to you? There are two kingdoms, and they wrestle against each other. Which side are you wrestling with and or against? Well, pastor, I'm a Christian. I'm wrestling with God. Well, hallelujah. We all wrestle with God, but sometimes we have to ask ourselves, am I at this point in my life, at this point in my relationship, at this point in my spiritual journey as a Christian, am I wrestling in different areas of my life? Is there something specific that I'm wrestling against God? I can't seem to get that breakthrough because he has his will and I'm outside his will. And instead of wrestling on the same side with God, if you're wrestling with God, you're on the same side wrestling for the same thing, right? Wrestling through my lack of faith, wrestling through times of trials. I'm wrestling through it, but I'm still with God because I'm, I'm in his will. But sometimes we can get outside of his will and we start wrestling against God. Start wrestling against God. If you're going to wrestle, because I may know faith sometimes feels like a wrestling match. It can be a little bit tiring. If you're going to fight the good fight of faith, you have to have the right weapons of warfare. And because God is with you, say God is with me. God is with you. And so that none can withstand against you, he has equipped you with his battle armor. Truth, righteousness, the gospel, faith, salvation, and the word. That was what we just read. Truth, salvation, righteousness, the gospel, faith, and the word of God. If you're going to wrestle against the things that are coming against your faith and against your Christianity, we have to understand what our weapons of warfare are. God is gracious, and he has equipped you for victory. Does anybody want a victory? Yeah. God has equipped you for victory. Believer, you have been called. You have been anointed. You have been equipped to wrestle against the things that are against God. You have been called into battle. Like it or not, there's a spiritual battle, and you have been called into battle. God's not going to send you out there to be defeated. He's going to give you the weapons and tools so that you can be victorious. Christian, you have been called. You have been anointed and equipped to wrestle with the things that are with God. God has equipped you to wrestle against the things that are against him. God has equipped you to wrestle with the things that are with him. Like what? Like faith. Faith can be a struggle, and sometimes we wrestle with faith. Am, am I going in the right way? Is God, is this really you, Lord? I don't know. I'm hanging in there, God. I'm getting weak. I've been locked up. I've lost my job. I don't know what else to do. My faith is failing me. I don't know what to do. Maybe I should go back to my old life, dealing drugs or whatever it was, and those things that are against God, and we wrestle uh, 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 against those things. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. I want to wrestle with my, I may be wrestling with my faith, but I want to stick to you, God. And so these things that come, these things that Jesus says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church, they're coming in, they've come into all of our households. And so there's out, people out there who are watching on the internet who are growing weary and tired and say, I'm about to go back to my old life. And when I go back to my old life, outside of the will of God, all of a sudden I'm wrestling against God, not with God. Does that make sense? Here's somebody in Genesis. Go, let's go to Genesis, Old Testament, chapter 32. We're going to look at Jacob. Recently, in the recent message, we talked about the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then we talked about Joseph and Moses and how they, how God brought his promises forth to you and to me through that family, through that lineage all the way up to us and how we're adopted into the family of Abraham because he was a man of faith. He believed God. He was accounted as righteousness. And we, because we believe God, we are accounted as righteous. And so we're adopted into the family of Abraham. So he's the father of faith and we're 
by faith, we have been adopted into the family of faith. And we have Abraham, then we had Isaac, who was the son of promise. Remember, we talked about that, and the son of Isaac was Jacob. And Jacob was a twin brother, and he had a a brother named Esau. And even when they were coming out of the wombs, Jacob was coming out second, but he was already grabbing onto Esau's leg, and he's called, he was a heel catcher. He grabbed him, and he came out grabbing his brother's head because leg and cat, uh, hold on to his ankle because he wanted to be first. He wanted to be first, but God said, no, you're not first. Esau's first. And, but God, Jacob came out, and he had that in him. And that was a... Um, future shadowing of how he ran his life. He was a manipulator. He lied and cheated in his way through life, always trying to get ahead. But God had a plan. He had a promise for him. And so he had to wrestle with God. He wrestled with God all his life because he somehow he understood that promise. And God, he, God visited him a few times over his life. And, and he made a lot of enemies. And his chief enemy was Esau. And Esau became a prince. He was a prince of this a uh, big, huge tribe over here. And Jacob was over here fighting and tending sheep and getting ripped off for a wife. He's got a wife that he didn't want, all these things that he went through. And now he, he's, a day of reckoning is coming. And he says, Esau has a large army. That man, that your brother, you know, the one you, you he feels like you ripped, up, ripped off his birthright, that you took his place even out of the womb. You were trying to usurp him and you usurped him and you stole his inheritance. Well, he's coming to get you. He has a big army. He's coming. So now he's, he's out there and he's running through the desert. He, there's a, one that's kind of funny. He's out there in the, in the wilderness. He's losing everything. He's, he's got possessions too, but he doesn't know what to do because he's sending uh, gifts to Esau because he knows Esau's ar army is coming. And he's out there in the middle of the dark and he sees Jacob's ladder. All these things are amazing, amazing encounters with God. And the whole time he's building memorials. I saw God. I'm going to build a memorial. I saw the ladder of God. I saw angels. I'm going to build a memorial. And he falls asleep with, a, with his head on a rock. How hard does your head have to be that you can use a rock for a pillow? Pretty hard. That's Jacob. Genesis chapter 32 says... And so he sends messengers. He said, go, my, go over there here and, and send all these things. They send cattle and sheep and all these things over there to, to his brother who's coming over the hill. And he's looking for him. And so verse 6 of chapter 32. Then the messengers returned to Jacob saying, we came to your brother Esau and he also is coming to meet you. And 400 men are with him. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people who were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies. And he said, if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the other company, which is left, will escape. So he's strategizing how he can get away. Then Jacob said, oh, God, my father Abraham. Jacob wrestled with God all his life. Now he's praying. How many know that wrestling sometimes comes in the form of praying. Wrestling with God, he starts praying. This, he starts wrestling with God. Then Jacob said, Oh my God, Father, Oh God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, so he starts, you know, God, you made me some promises here, and I don't know if you better think about that. The Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your family, and I will deal with you, deal well with you. And then he starts confessing. He says, I'm a wreck. I'm a mess. He says, I am not worthy of the least of the mercies of all the, tr the truth which you have shown your servant. God showed him angels. He showed him ladders to heaven. He showed him amazing things in, while he was out there in the wilderness. He said, and you showed me all these amazing things. I'm not even worthy. How many know that you're not worthy? Yeah. And I'm not worthy. You have shown your servant, for I crossed over the Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray. From the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children. For you said, God, I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for the multitude. We know that Jacob, we just studied that a couple of weeks. He becomes the father of the nation Israel. The nation Israel comes through Jacob, through his sons, 
Go down to verse 22. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and the 11 sons. He, uh, Benjamin hadn't been born at this point, so he has, he has 11 sons, the younger one, youngest one being Joseph, and crossed over the ford at Jabbok. He took them and sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. Jacob was left alone, and a man, is yours capitalized? Mine's capitalized. Is yours capitalized? Most people believe that this was a Christophany. It was Jesus incarnate. Jesus himself showed up. A man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Do you see that? A man wrestled with him. Does your say against him? With him. Jacob was in the will of God, as stubborn as he was, as sinister as he could be, as short-sighted and the and the usurper that he was, he was still in the will of God. So he was with God. And he's, the man, Jesus, wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw, when Jesus saw, or the angel of the Lord saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched his socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Jesus touched him, knocked his, the, the, his hip out of joint. How many know that God, he can get rough for your own good, for my own good, he can get rough. Then Jesus said, let me go for the daybreaks. But Jacob said, I will not let go unless you bless me. You see that wrestling? See, Jacob and God were on the same side. He's not wrestling against God. He's wrestling with God because God wanted to bless him because he had made a promise. Say, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to deal well with you. And you're, you are my anointed one. You're, my, you're, you're chosen by me. I want to do this. But because of the way you are, the way you run your life, I'm wrestling with you, not against you. See, we saw in Ephesians, we need to wrestle against the things of the devil, and we need to wrestle with or for the things of God. Do you see that? So the man wrestled with him. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He said, what is your name, Jacob? It's a day of reckoning. God wants to know, what is your name? Who are you? Because God already knows. We need to come to the place where we say, this is who I am. God, help me get through this. I don't want to be this anymore. We need to confess who we are to God. He already knows. But we can't get past that place that we're at unless we say, this is who I am. I don't like it. Take me to a different place. I don't like this anymore. And so he's asking, take a look at yourself, Jacob. Look back at your life. Look at back how you, how you tried to rip your brother off, how you did all these things, the manipulations and all these things you did. Who are you now? Look where you are. What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Jacob means a usurper. A usurper is someone who gets out of line. He cuts in line or takes somebody's place where he takes things that don't belong to him. Verse 20, and he said, your name shall no longer be called usurper, but Israel. For you have struggled, everybody say, with God. With God. With God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, Tell me your name, I pray. He said, why is it that you ask me my name? And he blessed him there. He came to that wreck and he said, What's, who are you, God? I already, this is who I am. I'm a wreck, but who are you? He finally came to that place. I want to know you. I really, really want to know you. I've been walking with you, I think. I've been serving you, I think. I've been singing for you. I've been playing guitar for you. I've been all these things for you. I dedicated my business to you. I dedicated babies for you. I preached and I did all these things, I think, within your will. But I am here for you to take, to reveal to me who I am right now. So that I, and once I come to that place, and once you change who I don't want to be anymore, I can, now I can really see you. Now I know who your name is. It's one thing to wrestle against God. It's the opposite to wrestle with God. Jacob and God were on the same page. Jacob wrestled. Je Jacob wanted a blessing, and God wanted to bless him. Jacob wrestled with God not against God. Sometimes walking by faith 
and not by sight can cause us to stumble. God is gracious and he understands that because we live in a natural reality, the things of the spirit, like faith, can be unnatural to us. If walking by faith was easy, it wouldn't be faith. Do you know that? If faith was easy, it wouldn't be faith. God blessed Jacob when he was ready to be blessed. God blessed Jacob until he came to that place of repentance and said, I'm done. I've made a mess. You're, the, you're all I got left, God. Sometimes God is our last resort. And if he's our last resort, that's a good place to be. But wouldn't it be better for him to be our first resort? God blessed Jacob when he was ready to be blessed. God wants to bless you. Are you wrestling with God? Or are you wrestling against God, worship team? Can you kind of get Sylvia and the kids ready? Because they have to make an announcement at the end. Wrestling with God is far different than wrestling against God. To be with God is to be in his will, to be against God is to be outside of his will. Faith sometimes can be a struggle, but we are called to wrestle with our faith struggles so that we won't wrestle against our faith. Don't wrestle against your faith. Jesus said that those who are not with him are against him. Do you know that? It says in Matthew, Jesus says, if you're not with me, you're against me. Pray that he would reveal his will to you and for you so that you not mistakenly turn against him. The good news is that God is for you and not against you. Be for God and not against God. Does anybody receive that this morning? Amen. Amen. The two can look really a lot alike. I can, we can get to a point where we're, we're thinking, you know, I'm walking this thing for God. I'm walking this thing for God. And, and sometimes we're actually walking against his will and against God himself. But because you are in Christ, your position is secure. But sometimes we can get caught up in going in the wrong direction. And maybe your motives are right. Maybe they're not. Maybe whatever reason, there's something, that, there's something in us that maybe we don't even recognize. And all of a sudden, we're moving in the rock, wrong direction. And we move outside of God's will. All of a sudden, we're pushing against our faith. And we're doing things that are not concurrent with what a faith walk should look like. We are doing things that don't reflect what a relationship with God would look like. We're doing things or making decisions that are motivated by motivations that are outside of God's will, whatever those motivations may be. So it's important that we stop and we wonder if there's something in your life maybe that you you're like feel stuck. Maybe you need to stop and say, well, is this, am I outside of God's will? Maybe I'm wrestling against God instead of with God. God is on your side. God's on your side. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God will never leave you alone. The only time we're alone is when we're outside of God's will and we choose to be walk in that place. We saw the prodigal son last week and we saw he got, he got outside of the will of the father. And the father couldn't go bring him home like he went and got like the shepherd went and found the sheep, like the lady who found the coin. Because the rebellious one is the one that's not ready to come home until we get to that place where we say, okay, I'm done, like Jacob and like the prodigal son. I'm done, God, here I am. This is what I've done. Can you fix this for me? Only when we get to that place can we have that breakthrough. Does anybody need a breakthrough? Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. We'll worship to you. Please stand. Wow, this message, it's so simple, but it's so profound. God is with us. We need to be with God. So today as we sing, just honor the words of the song and know that God is leading you. 
All these pieces broken and scattered In mercy gathered, mended and whole Empty-handed but not forsaken I've been set free Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see. You take our failures, you take our weakness, you set your treasures in jars of clay. So take this heart, Lord, I'll be a vessel, the world to see. Amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind. words are so beautiful God the things that you have done for us Lord we just we're broken vessels but we know that you pour in and you love us and we thank you
amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, 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 I once was lost, and now I am found, was blind. Amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see you. Jesus. Amazing grace. So we'd like to invite Sylvia and Moises up. They'd love to just chat with you guys for a quick second. So welcome to the stage. Hello, everybody. Hello, brother. Uh, service is so wonderful all the time. Don't you feel it? Man. The love, the joy, yeah, it's amazing. We're just here to share with you uh, about the jars of hope and what all of you made possible. So if we can, oh, well, we won't have a drum roll, but we're going to have a bongo roll. Yeah. Give me a bongo roll, please. Thank you, thank you. Here you go, my love. Okay, good morning, everyone. This year we want to share that the jars of hope for 2020 Makes me cry. <laughs> it's okay, you can cry. It's a good tear. Another drum roll. <laughs> Collect. Yeah, there you go. The Jars of Hope collected a total of one thousand four hundred and twenty-one dollars and forty-three cents. This included donations from Celebrate Jesus Church, family members, friends, and people in our community. We were able to feed 23 families complete turkey meals. The turkeys were supplied by the church. Seth and Nancy worked so hard and they got the turkeys. And we were able to supply all the sides for the family meals. Let's give God a thankful praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I have to <laughs> stuck together. Also, because there is money left over, we will be supplying ham dinners to some families this Christmas season. Amen. If you need one or someone that you know needs one, please see Moises, Moises, Seth, Nancy, or I. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for these, for these funds to do this. Without your love and without your blessings, this would have never come to pass. So we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you all. I want to just thank you because... You know, it was a little jar, and uh, <clears throat> a little jar can't do too much. But when God touches that jar, boom, mm. it exploded. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to thank everybody here for that. Amen. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Amazing grace, how sweet the that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see you now. Oh, I can see the love. Down, 
raising up the broken to life. Raising up the broken to life with the jars of hope. Celebrate Jesus Church and your love. Have a wonderful, beautiful, and blessed week. May you go in grace and love. Amen. Amen.